AQA Chemistry 1 Complete Revision Notes. Feel free to pause the video and make notes. I would advise that you download this video as an MP3 file and listen to it whenever you can. Make sure you understand what is being said. This is the most important thing. There are about 100 different types of atom, giving about 100 different elements. Each element has its own unique symbol. Compounds are substances with two or more different elements chemically joined together. The chemical formula of a compound shows how many of each type of atom it contains. Iron 3 oxide has the formula Fe subscript 2 O subscript 3, which has two iron atoms and three oxygen atoms. Atoms have a small central nucleus with electrons in orbit around it. Protons have a positive charge, neutrons are neutral, and electrons have a negative charge. Atoms of the same element always have the same number of protons. Metals lose electrons to form positive ions. Nonmetals gain electrons to form negative ions. Metals and nonmetals form ionic bonds together. Nonmetals can share electrons to form covalent bonds. Atoms are conserved during chemical reactions. They just change partners. This conservation is shown in balanced chemical equations. The electrons around an atom are arranged in energy levels, electron shells. The first shell holds two electrons, the others eight, for the first twenty elements. The elements can be arranged in a periodic table in which elements with similar properties occur in the same group. The group number tells you how many electrons the element has in its outer shell. Metals are found to the left of the table. Nonmetals to the right, divided by a zigzag line. Group 1 contains very reactive metals. Group 1 metals react with oxygen and air, producing colored flames. Group 1 metals react violently with water, giving off hydrogen gas. Group 0 contains the unreactive noble gases. Helium is used for safe airships and for party balloons. Argon is used to fill old style light bulbs. Neon is used in neon lights and is a very low temperature refrigerant. Many raw building materials come from rocks such as limestone. There are many environmental and economic problems associated with digging rocks from the earth. Some are the cost of extracting the rock, the dust and dirt that will be produced, and the extra traffic generated. breaks down when heated to form calcium oxide. Oxide is a compound of oxygen with another element or group. If you add water to calcium oxide, it forms calcium hydroxide, which can be used to neutralize acid in soil. Lime water, calcium hydroxide solution, turns cloudy with carbon dioxide. This is the test for carbon dioxide. Limestone and clay are the raw materials of cement and concrete. Concrete is a very versatile building material. Concrete is cheap and easy to store, mix and pour into molds of any shape or size. Once set, concrete is rock hard. Most metals are found in chemical compounds called ores. Mining ores has many social, economic and environmental effects, some positive, some negative. Metal ores are finite and are expensive to refine, 
so recycling metals makes economic sense as well as having less impact on the environment than mining. Most metals are found as ores from which the metal must be extracted. Some metals are more economic to extract than others. Less reactive metals such as copper can be extracted by carbon reduction. More reactive metals such as aluminium must be extracted by electrolysis. Electrolysis on an industrial scale uses large amounts of electrical energy, so it is expensive. Oxidation is a type of chemical reaction. When a substance is oxidized, it gains oxygen, loses hydrogen or loses electrons. Blast furnaces have to run at very high temperatures to reduce iron oxide and melt the iron. Good quality copper ores are now very rare, so copper is usually made by other means. Acid is used to leach copper salts from ore, after which they are purified by electrolysis. New ideas like bioleaching, phytomining and displacement are being tried out to get copper from ores with very little copper. Economically, exploitable metal ores are finite and will run out. The developed world is taking more than its fair share of metal resources. Recycling can help to make our resources last longer and save energy and money while reducing pollution. New techniques such as fighter mining can be used to reclaim wasteland and gain more metals. Metals have many useful properties that we use in our everyday lives. Iron can be strong enough to build bridges and machines, it can be rolled, pressed and cut into any shape. Elements in the central block of the periodic table are called transition metals, everyday metals. Transition metals can be bent or hammered into shape and are good conductors of heat and electricity. Copper can be stretched into wire for electrical cables or formed into pipes for water. Aluminium and titanium are used for aircrafts because of their low density. Titanium resists corrosion, so is ideal for nuclear reactor pipes or hip replacements. The iron coming out of a blast furnace is impure and brittle, so has limited uses. Pure metals can be quite soft so they are mixed with small amounts of other elements to make the metal harder. Alloys have different sized atoms added. These distort the layers and stop them sliding, making the metal harder. Most iron is turned into its alloy steel by the addition of a little carbon. The amount of carbon controls the properties of the steel. Most metals are used in the form of alloys to alter their properties to suit our needs. An alloy is a mixture of metals, or a metal mixed with small amounts of other elements. Crude oil consists of a mixture of hydrocarbons, mostly alkanes. The hydrocarbons in crude oil are separated by fractional distillation. The larger an alkane's molecules, the higher its boiling point, the lower down the fractionating column its vapors condense, and the less easily it ignites or flows. Coal is mostly carbon. Natural gas and fuels from crude oil contain carbon and hydrogen. They may also contain some sulfur. When these fuels burn completely, the carbon is oxidized to carbon dioxide. The hydrogen is oxidized to water vapor. Carbon monoxide, particulates, sulfur di dioxides and oxides of nitrogen may be produced when fuels burn incompletely. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that contributes to global warming. Solid particles from burning fuels cause global dimming. Sulfur dioxide is a cause of acid rain. Sulfur can be removed from fuels before they are burnt. Sulfur dioxide can be removed from waste gases in power stations. Fossil fuels may well run out. The, develop, uh, the development of better fuels such as ethanol and hydrogen will help to reduce the rate at which the fossil fuels are used 
and reduce pollution. Shorter alkanes are more useful as fuels than longer alkanes, but are in short supply. Longer alkanes are cracked by being vaporized and passed over a hot catalyst. Cracking forms shorter alkanes used as fuels and alkenes used to make plastics. Alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons. Polymers are the long chain molecules made by joining lots of short molecules called monomers together. Alkenes can react with each other to form polymers because of their double carbon bonds. Many different polymers with different properties are made by using different alkenes. Many new polymers are being developed with different properties and uses. Polymers can be disposed of in three ways, burying in landfill sites, but this takes up much land and many polymers are non-biodegradable. Burning in incinerators, but this gives off the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide. Recycling, but it's difficult to separate the different types of polymers. The use of chemicals derived from crude oil has brought many advantages to our lives, but has also created problems for us to deal with as a society. Ethanol is used as fuel, a solvent and in alcohol drinks. Ethanol can be made by fermentation of carbohydrates or hydrogen of ethane. Hydrogen of ethane is faster, is a continuous process and makes pure ethanol, but fermentation uses less energy and uses renewable raw materials. Some fruits, seeds and nuts are rich in oils. These oils can be extracted by crushing the plant material, followed by pressing or distillation. Water and other impurities are removed from the extracted oil. Vegetable oils can be used as fuels such as biodiesel. Emulsions are mixtures of oil and water. Emulsions can be stabilized by emulsifiers. Emulsions are thicker than oil or water on their own. Emulsions are used in food, cosmetics and paints, where they provide improved texture, coating ability and appearance. Unsaturated vegetable oils contain carbon-carbon double bonds. The amount of unsaturation can be measured using bromine water. Unsaturated vegetable oils may be hardened by hydronating them. The melting points of oils increase when they are hydrogenated. Vegetable oils are important in the diet because they provide energy and nutrients. Different types of fats and oils have different effects on our health. The earth is made up of a central core surrounded by the mantle and crust. The crust and upper mantle are broken up into pieces called tectonic plates and are slowly moving due to the convection currents in the mantle. Earthquakes and volcanoes occur at the boundaries between tectonic plates. Warning signs occur before earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, but it is difficult to predict exactly when they will take place. Alfred Wegener proposed the theory of continental drift based on the fact that the shape of continents fit together like a jigsaw plus evidence from fossils and rock layers. His ideas were rejected at the time because there was no explanation for how the continents could move. Wegener's ideas were accepted as more evidence than fitted in with this theory was found and a theory to explain how the continents could move was developed. Air is a mixture of many gases. It is about four-fifths of nitrogen and one-fifth oxygen plus small amounts of other gases. The gases in air have different uses and can be separated by fractional distillation of liquefied air. The composition of air has remained roughly constant for about 200 million years. Scientists have several different theories about the Earth atmosphere and how it has changed over time. The early atmosphere may have been mainly carbon dioxide, 
like those of Mars and Venus today. The gases in the early atmosphere may have been released from volcanoes. Oxygen built up in the atmosphere as organisms that photosynthesize evolved, but scientists do not know how life began. Most of the carbon rocks from the carbon dioxide in the early atmosphere is now locked up in fossil fuels in sedimentary rocks. The amount of carbon dioxide in the air has remained roughly constant for the last 200 million years because processes that release it into it and remove it from the atmosphere have been balanced. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has now started to rise and is likely to be responsible for global warming. Increasing carbon dioxide in the air is lowering the pH of the oceans, affecting marine life. And that's about it. C3 shall be coming soon, and maybe other revision videos, but in the meantime, good luck with your exams.